Blazing Saddles' most loved line was actually a mistake. It's amazing how an accidental line from Blazing Saddles has become one of the movie's most memorable moments. Marked by an indelible impression on the entertainment industry, Warner Brothers' 1974 production of Blazing Saddles revolutionized comedy and remains one of cinema's most memorable movies. Here are some facts about this classic film that you may not know. Soar to the Heavens Incredibly, Sheriff Bart wasn't held in high regards by the townspeople, so he brandished a gun at his head to prove himself and gain their trust. An incident from Mel's childhood inspired this bold move. He had attempted to steal a water pistol and some gum when a store clerk tried stopping him. In response, little Mel threatened to shoot with the poached toy gun. A Troubling Visual Although Mongo's knockout punch scene was deemed humorous by many, it sparked disapproval from animal rights activists. They viewed this act as mistreatment even though no animals were hurt in the production. It was argued that filmmakers could have created an alternative version of the scene without prompting any ill intentions in viewers. Nevertheless, they opted not to do so. Fortunately, horses have been pre-trained for such scenes and thus placing them at ease during filming with no harm done. A Way Down Mongo had no qualms about parking his horse in a prohibited area, as you can guess. That didn't sit well with another passing rider. Mongo then strode over to confront the other person on their horse and bop them off. Believe it or not, this isn't something Brooks made up. The idea was taken directly from an anecdote from his former supervisor, Sid Caesar. Sleeping with the Stars Slim Pickens, one of the many actors hired for a comedy western involving cowboy's flatulence, wanted to embody his character Taggart the leader of a bullying gang working vigorously to scare Rock Ridge's citizens out of their town. To get into the mindset of an outlaw like Taggart, Slim opted to sleep outside under the stars with his Winchester by his side as if he were living the life. This dedication and precision added more realism and humor to this hilarious movie. What's the Power of a Name? Regarding the title of this movie, the writers had difficulty deciding. They initially wanted 10X, which was a nod to Malcolm X. However, they eventually changed it to Black Bart. This didn't satisfy them, so they considered an alternative name, the Purple Sage. Fortunately for us, Brooks stumbled upon the final choice while in the shower, Blazing Saddles. His wife adored it, and with that, our beloved comedy classic was given the memorable title we know today. Crickets Warner Brothers had faith in Brooks' ability to replicate the effervescent magic he created with the producers. Still, upon initial screenings, studio executives were worried by how little they found it funny. Nevertheless, Brooks persevered and insisted that the movie just needed time to be appreciated by the public. Warner Brothers eventually conceded and granted its release into cinemas. Their trust was rewarded when the early reception of this film was overwhelmingly positive. A Parsimonious Production Company Before its release, Brooks had to work relentlessly to prove the film's potential to the studio. It's simply too crude for American audiences, exclaimed the lead of distribution. Let us cut our losses and drop it. This is when John Kelly, the president, then proclaimed that only Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York would initially view this movie. However, it became one of their most profitable blockbusters by summer's end. The Gridiron Gang Although Hedley Lamar's plan to oust Sheriff Bart didn't go as expected, Harvey Corman was not the only actor in Blazing Saddles with a successful career. Alex Karras had an incredible 12-year run in the NFL and remarked on four Pro Bowl teams, nine All-Pro selections, and him making it into the 1960s All-Decade team. After retiring from football, he went into acting and starring roles such as Webster and the Gridiron Gang before his passing in 2012 at age 77. Immerse Yourself in an Enchanting Atmosphere Following the massive success of his Broadway production for the producers, he was asked to bring Blazing Saddles to the same venue. Brooks knew exactly how it needed to be done but feared that people wouldn't accept its risque content. He stated, It's pretty daring material with profanity and racial slurs. 
Despite knowing this, he wasn't scared away by these challenges. Instead, he mentioned that even though it could have been a risk in 1974 when it came out on film screens across America, now things are different. I don't know if I can get away with it today, he said. To put it boldly, Mel Brooks is proud to say that Blazing Saddles, which earned him numerous awards, could be the funniest movie of all time. As he compared it to Some Like It Hot by Billy Wilder, a film wildly recognized for its humor, Mel said, It's not right for me to say so, but I truly believe there are more laughs in my movie scene for scene. This might be the most amusing motion picture ever made. Going the Extra Mile Mel Brooks had always admired Madeline Kahn's comedic prowess, so he was thrilled when he wrote the role of Lily von Stupp for her. However, after she came to read for him, Brooks asked to see her legs, making Madeline assume his intentions were not honorable. But Mel quickly clarified it was because Marlene Dietrich inspired the character and needed nice legs. Understandably wary about this request, she warned him in jest, no touching. The Decision Confronting Cleveland At first, Mel Brooks was adamant about casting Richard Pryor as Sheriff Bart. He had the utmost confidence in his talent and praised him. But due to his past issues, substance abuse that led to a close call of self-immolation, the studio presented Cleveland Little as a choice. Then, after observing how effortlessly Little delivered each line, Brooks shifted gears and granted him the part without hesitation. Is that even an option? Burton Gilliam played Lyle, one of the bad guy's associates. A line in the script had his character insulting Sheriff Bart with a racial slur, an offensive word that made him hesitant to say it out loud. But Little assured them by saying, if I thought you'd use those words without this being strictly business related, we'd be going to the first city right now. So don't worry about it, let's have some fun. At the forefront, Mel Brooks dared to defy the boundaries of comedy, bringing joy and delight to anyone with an appreciation for humor, all while causing worries in studio executives who demanded cuts be made to his script before its release. Despite their pleadings, Mel only trimmed out one scene, where Lily von Stupp tempts Bard as she blows out her candle, asking, Is it true what they say about you people? He responds unhesitatingly, I hate to disillusion you, ma'am, but you're sucking on my arm. This line remains a timeless classic among fans all over. Summoning the Duke While concocting his parody, Mel believed it was essential to incorporate a reference to the original. Consequently, he considered including iconic Western actor John Wayne in the film. Incredibly enough, they crossed paths on Warner Brothers lot one day, and after hearing about the movie from Mel himself, John put forward an idea for a small role, but later declined due to its content, saying, Nah, I can't do a movie like that. Nonetheless, he promised he'd be among the first viewers when released. An Exchange of Favors The legendary Gene Wilder was a comedy icon who first teamed up with Mel Brooks on the classic film The Producers. When Mel asked him to star in his next movie, Blazing Saddles, Wilder made an innovative demand. If he could look over a script that he had written and make it into a feature-length movie too. Miraculously enough, Mel accepted the deal. That screen went on to be recognized by many awards committees as the Oscar-nominated film Young Frankenstein. Misleading Melodies In order to get what he wanted, Mel Brooks resorted to telling a little white lie. He kept the true nature of Blazing Saddles from Frankie Lane, its composer who had been singing and writing music for 75 years before then. Lane thought he was crafting an epic Western score instead of a parody soundtrack without knowing otherwise. This was so because Mel didn't want him to change it in case he knew that it would be used as part of a comedy movie. An Unexpected Visage Movie premieres are typically glittering events with tailored suits and limos everywhere you look. Still, for this particular film, the guests took a unique approach. They arrived in style on horseback to fit the movie's theme. The Uninvited Extra in the unforgettable conclusion of the movie, Sheriff Bart and the Waco Kid flee across a Warner Brothers backlot. Amidst their chaos, all but one particular person left in pursuit was noted by Brooks, an unfortunately lost passerby who would have been clueless on how to proceed if they hadn't kindly permitted him to stay. 
Despite being outside his comfort zone, this individual appears to have created a memorable moment that we can still reflect upon today. Experience the quirkiness of Mel Brooks in an interactive sing-along. As Hadley Lamar and his men approach the sheriff's fake town in the final scene of Blazing Saddles, a brief moment departs from this action. In that cutaway is Lily von Stupp, accompanied by some German soldiers, singing an iconic drinking song previously sung during the producers with Gene Wilder, Zero Mostel, and Kenneth Mars. Let your voice be heard. Crafting the script for Blazing Saddles took effort, as many people vied to have their ideas included in the movie. According to Brooks, the writing process of Blazing Saddles was essentially a volatile battle between five drunken individuals who all wanted their concepts integrated into the film. Fortunately, I had my directorial authority, which allowed me to determine what stayed and what went, luckily for me. I also happened to be the strongest voice among us. The Waco Incident A Catastrophic Misfire in Casting When the studio initially wanted to cast for the iconic Waco Kid, Johnny Carson and Gig Young were on their list. But of course, The Tonight Show host turned down the role, while Young accepted only for his off-screen alcohol issues to affect him during filming. Therefore, Wilder had no choice but stepping in, bringing such life and laughter into this classic character that you can't picture anyone else playing it. The Franchise That Never Reached Its Potential Andrew Bergman provided the uproarious script that catapulted Blazing Saddles to success, inspiring follow-up work such as Black Bart, a TV series starring Louis Gossett Jr., and broadcast on April 4, 1975. Despite never being seen by audiences, production persisted due to an agreement granting it official sequel status. Oscar Approved Every year, the Academy Awards commemorate movies that have had a profound effect on viewers. This is why Mel Brooks and his Blazing Saddles cast were shocked when they found out Lily von Stupp, played by Madeleine Kahn, was nominated for an Oscar in the Best Supporting Actress category. Although she didn't win, it was still one of the most remarkable honors just to be listed as a nominee. The comedic film parody touched many lives and left its mark, proving that great art isn't always what you expect. Impeccable Imitation If you're a fan of Western films, chances are that you recognize George Gabby Hayes. He was one of the greats in the genre and had an impressive breadth of talent. When Mel Brooks scoured for his perfect cast member, he stumbled upon Jack Starrett, who possessed an uncanny ability to mimic Gabby's performances. Thus, convinced by this marvelous resemblance, Brooks decided to hire him with instructions to imitate Mr. Hayes exclusively in their movie, and sure enough, Jack nailed it. Get ready to play an exciting, dynamic game of musical chairs. Brooks has frequently gone against the grain with his creative decisions, and when it came to choosing music for his film, he was no exception. Rather than opting for background noise or sound effects, Brooks brought in Count Basie, one of the greatest band leaders around. Together, they composed April in Paris from within the movie itself. On top of that, Brooks also wrote a theme song dedicated to this picture, which was sung by none other than Frankie Lane himself, an extraordinary achievement. Get the restful sleep you deserve. Chief Executive Ted Ashley was far from satisfied upon watching Mel Brooks' film showing for Warner Brothers. He confronted the director and harshly commanded, You must cut out the N-word, along with the bean scene, punching a horse, Lily von Stupp's part, and also you're sucking on my arm or something of that sort. All these have to be removed. To this demand, however, instead of following orders as instructed, he simply disposed of all notes given and walked away without any comment. Donning the Heels of Disdain Gig Young was initially cast as Waco Kid, and one of his first scenes was when he drunkenly scolded Bart. It may have seemed like he was merely acting drunk amazingly well, but in reality, Gig had consumed so much alcohol that production had to be halted. Accordingly, Gene Wilder replaced him. Subsequently, Young took legal action against the studio for breach of contract several years later. Off Script a story of surprising possibilities. The comedy was recognized for its clever, rib-tickling dialogues. However, one line stood out. When the townspeople expressed their contempt towards Bart, Waco Kid confronted him by saying, These are just simple farmers, common folks of this new West. 
you know, morons. The last part wasn't in the script. So Cleavon Little couldn't help but giggle at his own improvisation. <laughs>